and welcome to Creative Broadcasting, the station of unlimited possibilities, presents Creating Your Seat at the Table with your host, Ashley Little, as she welcomes her guest to the table. Welcome to Creating Your Seat at the Table. I am your host, Ashley Little. A little bit about myself, corporate professional by day, serial entrepreneur by night, a six-time best-selling author, CEO and founder of Ashley Little Enterprises, LLC, owner and creator of Creative Broadcasting, and founder and owner of Talk Radio and TV Network, LLC. Tonight we have an amazing special VIP guest by the name of Krista Clark Chapman. A little bit about her. Looking back over my life growing up in a single-parent home with five other siblings, I can only thank God for the guidance and support system he has placed in my life. As a young girl, I suffered with low self-esteem, depression, and thought everybody was supposed to be my friend. Throughout my life, I tried to find easy ways out instead of believing in God that he would see me through. Of course, we all made poor decisions, but somewhere down that road, I found me. Beautiful Spirit of Women Girls Mentoring Program was designed and created by God himself. He gave me a, a gift and a vision to fulfill an assignment to be a restoration to girls and women in our community. I have a chance to stand before girls who were just like me, lost and trying to find their way in life. I knew it was time to empower these young girls and mold them to become entrepreneurs. The current social issues that we are mainly focused on are empowering our youth, education, and healthy living. You can be who you want to be and never let anyone stop your dream from coming true. Lord Hill Paris, Women of Work, Daily Point of Light, and State of Tennessee Governors Honoree, Krista Clark Chapman, a wife and a mother of three beautiful children who means the world to her, is the founder of Beautiful Spirited Women Girls Mentoring Program. Beautiful Spirited Women was founded in November of 2010. She was chosen as one of the top super women in business representing women that is making a difference in their community. She is also the treasurer and secretary of her own chapter through Royal Neighbors of America and the digital mentor of Peace First. Chris is also a graduate of Lane College Business Management and University of Phoenix Master of Business Administration. Chris is passionate about assisting and teaching others to get to the next level. While Chris and her dedicated team work with over 10,000 youth a year, they are making major impacts in no teen pregnancy as well as, well as being a huge advocate, advocate against no girl violence. They have hosted over 200 free workshops and 302 community service projects. Beautiful spirited women have not yet to have a teen pregnancy within their organization. Beautiful spirited women also feed and clothe over 200 people in need every year for the holidays as well as bless over 200 seniors ages 60 and over with perishable items called blessing boxes. With over 900 plus community service hours, Beautiful Spirited Women BSW was chosen as an MVP nonprofit organization through the Memphis Grizzlies Foundation and several other accolades such as the City of Memphis Proclamation, Best Nonprofit at the Stone Awards. Beautiful Spirited Women works with girls on a consistent basis from ages 4 to 19 years old and women 20 and over. Beautiful Spirited Women provides them with the resources they need to succeed in their lifetime. Crystal also has been a part of her illustrious sisterhood of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated of 17 years, and she enjoys reading, bowling, journals, and traveling with her family in her spare time. Welcome, welcome to the table, the amazing Crystal Clark Chapman. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for that warm welcome. Thank you so much for having me on tonight. You are welcome and excited to have you at the table, Chris. I know you're going to share some amazing wisdom and knowledge with the, our listeners. So please tell us about your entrepreneur journey. Uh, well, my entrepreneur journey has truly been an amazing journey. I never thought that I would be on this particular journey um, because growing up as a child, I did want to be a chief of police officer. Um, and, you know, as time went by and me growing up and noticing that, you know, police officers actually, you know, get hurt or they may, you know, get shot or anything of that nature. And I just kind of like, you know, changed my mind because I'm like, you know, I don't want to get hurt or I don't want to get shot. And I went on through life and noticed that I uh, picked up a another creative side of myself as being a professional hairstylist, which I do have my hair license as well through the state of Tennessee. And I noticed as well, you know, as time went on that 
this still was not, you know, my destiny. So, you know, going through those phases and going through life and noticing that everything that I wanted to do was not exactly what God had planned for me to do. So, um, you know, taking that those twists and those turns on this entrepreneur journey has been very challenging, but yet so such a blessing. Amazing. Thank you for sharing, you know, being vulnerable and sharing your journey. And so you are very passionate, Crystal, about restoring girls and women in our community. So please tell us more about your passion for our young girls. My passion for young girls actually came from my childhood experiences. As a child, I did suffer with low self-esteem. I also suffered with uh, depression. I also suffered with um bullying, and as we know as of today, those things are still going on. And, you know, 30, I say about 30 plus years ago, uh, we didn't think that those uh, issues and situations wasn't as bad because we, we were told to just, you know, hush, hush, be quiet about every little detail and every little thing. But as today come, you know, bullying is turning into um you know, children killing themselves, depression is turning to, you know, children uh, committing suicide, and, you know, the the whole situation uh, of those, you know, um, stipulations in girls are becoming very, very, very tense because now we have to actually pay closer attention to our young girls when they are going through those things. And I just, you know, felt like that really God chose me as a vessel um, to be a restoration queen for our community of girls is to make sure that these girls do not go through the same thing that I went through. But he also instilled in me to go out and find women who are passionate about girls as well because my story may not be the same as another person's story or another woman's story. So um, that other person that, you know, he seeks to for me to find that will come in and assist with the program, their story could be a little different from mine. So they will be able to come in and help the young girls as well because everything – um, that I am experiencing, I may not be experiencing something else. So that's why when he gave me the vision to go out and look for women who was just as passionate as me, I felt like that he uh, made it very clear that, you know, you're not the only person that goes through things, that you're not the only person that's going to be able to help th- these girls. So I need you to build a team. I need you to build women Um, that's passionate about what I am about to instill in you. And when I say that BSW has one of the strongest teams and leaders in our organization, like it's just really so unreal because we know in today's time women cannot get along. Women, if if, if a lot of people see a group of women, they say, oh, that's, they're, they're filled with drama, oh, they, they have, you know, I don't want to be with them, they backstabbers, they this, they that. So they kind of like back away from women groups because they feel like that we are there to just, you know, take a picture. But we actually are doing the work. We're actually serving in our communities to make a better and safe haven place for our youth girls in our community. I love that. And, I, you know, I was able to actually speak at your uh, conference a year ago. So when I say you're passionate, I love your passion for reaching back and pulling forward. And when I say your girls are amazing, I mean, they're all doing amazing awesome. things. Awesome. Thank they're you. All doing amazing things. And I know I read in your bio that to this day you haven't had one that was pregnant, right? I thought it was amazing. No teen pregnancy. No teen pregnancy. And these are all the girls who are registered and has been consistent with the program. We we have not yet to have a teen pregnancy in ten years. That's amazing. That is amazing. Thank and you. So Thank how, you. How can people get involved with Beautiful Spirited Women? How can they donate, support, give back? 
you know, tell us more about that and the different services that you all offer, because I know you have been traveling the world as well. <laughs> yes. yes. So we, we first and foremost do have a website where um, everyone can visit, which is www.beautifulspiritedwomen.org. And you can actually make a donation, and you can also register your daughter. And there is also a section where you can actually send in prayer requests as a youth girl and as a woman. So anytime you need a prayer or anytime you just need someone to talk to, the uh, prayer requests are anonymous, and we actually do pray for everyone who sends in a prayer request. So we do have all of those. And also the platform do um, give you an actual guidance of what we do, but um, to kind of piggyback off the website, we do have a beautiful spirited cupcake program, which is ages 4 to, uh, 4 to 11 years old, and that program is an enrichment program for our youth babies, and uh, we just try to, you know, keep them on the level as far as education, etiquette, um, manners and, you know, everything that you know, uh, self-esteem, bullying, all that good stuff. And then we also have the Beautiful Spirited Teen Program, which is ages 12 to 17. And that's our, you know, mid-teens and young adults as they transition. And then we have the Beautiful Spirited Mentees, which is ages 18 to 20. And that's the program where we try to find a way to transition those girls into becoming beautiful, spirited women. So everything is pretty much a stair step in life. And once they go out to college, we still stay in contact with them. We still um, make sure they don't go without. And we also bring those girls, those college girls, or wherever they go in life, we also bring them back to mentor to our teens as well as our cupcakes. And they're always welcome to volunteer and assist us as well. I love it. So I hope our listeners have been writing this down and getting these nuggets because Crystal has amazing services within Beautiful Spirited Women. They are doing some amazing things. So definitely go to their website, give back, donate, get involved, and support this amazing nonprofit that is making major strides. So, Crystal, what is some advice you would give to listeners who are looking to build a nonprofit? The advice that I would give each person who is actually um, wanting to start a nonprofit organization is first and foremost, um, I need you to actually um, pray. I need you to actually pray. Is is praying your prayer? Is this nonprofit? Is nonprofit for me? Because first and foremost, everything looks like glitz and glam, and it looks beautiful on websites, on social media platforms, and all that stuff. But behind closed doors, this is not a game, okay? This is, uh -huh. you have to be honestly passionate about giving back, making a difference. You have to have strength to know that there's months you're going to go without you have to understand that you may not have help at the moment. You have to understand that you may feel like you're alone at times. You're going to get frustrated. But with God, and if you're passionate about it, and you know that this is what God has placed in your life and placed in your heart to do is to start a nonprofit, I say go for it. And learn and learn and learn. And listen, and listen, and listen, and be patient, be patient, and be patient. Because when it's your time, it's your time. And you have to wait, wait your turn. And, 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 and in the process of you waiting your turn, you need to root as many people as you can on. And every time you go up, bring somebody up with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just said a whole word by itself that is so important that we reach back and help others and thanks for shining light on that you got to be passionate about it you got to pray about it right and you got to be passionate about it because like you said everything that you post ain't what it always supposed to be and so it's a That's lot right. of work involved in you know building a nonprofit and, and being you know and making sure that it's successful and that you're helping others and that you're making impact so that's right mm-hmm and so what is, what is some strategy you would give to listeners about raising money and funding for their nonprofits? Because that, that's important, too. And I know yes, that is. And I know you have many awards for funding for your nonprofit. 
Yes, that is that is strictly very important. Um, fundraising, you would need fundraising. The first thing I would say is that um, you have to actually build a trust in your community. The 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 people who you think that will fund you is the opposite. Like mm-hmm. it would be people that you do not know, and so that is the key to your success. First of all, you have to build relationships. You cannot expect anyone to fund your dream if they don't see consistency or they don't see passionate um, passion or they don't see the love that you have for what you're doing. They're not going to fund your dream. So if they don't see that you are consistent with what you are doing, or you're not putting the effort toward what you are doing, they're not going to fund your dream. So establishing relationships, getting out networking, and allowing people to, you know, see your work. Um, your work speaks for itself. A lot of people get so upset about when, when, when we, I say in general, when people are out there blessing people, a lot of people feel like that putting it on social media is not good. In today's world and nonprofit world, we have to show proof that we are serving our community in the way that we're supposed to be serving our community. Personally, we don't make money from this. Everything that we receive in our hands is either from God and it's from the people who believe in the mission that we are doing for our girls. So everything goes to your mission, okay? So if it's not going towards your mission, uh, I mean, that's, that's what you build your nonprofit for, is for the mission of what you're actually doing. So everything that comes in as far as finances should go exactly towards your mission. So after you build those relationships, after you network with those, you know, people, and then you start reaching out. But you can't reach out and you don't have any proof, or you can't reach out and you haven't done anything. So that's how you build your trust of of trying to get your information out there and trying to find funders who believe in your mission or who's passionate about what you're doing. Passion, you know, making sure that you build on those relationships. I mean, relationships are everything, right? They are everything. Yeah. And I'm glad you spoke about, don't be afraid to post it. Don't be afraid to show people what you're doing because you, they need to see proof. You're right. They need to see proof because it's a 501c3, right? So they want to see where their money's going, right? That's so, right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you went to create your own company. Uh, another one of your businesses is coaching, right? So you coach others on how to do nonprofits and how to start nonprofits and be successful. So tell us about your coaching services and how they can get involved if they're looking to um, hire you or book you or work with you. Awesome. So my new initiative that I have added personally after after 15 years, 10 years with BSW, and before that was more of a researching and learning the ins and outs, the tools of nonprofit, which there is so much more out there to learn, and I'm still in the learning process as well. But I took it upon myself personally is because I have, you know, I started out thinking that, uh, once I start this nonprofit, that I can reach out to people and ask them for help, or I can look to certain people and think that they're going to help me. But all I did was got turned down, or emailed didn't get returned, didn't get returned, and I I became frustrated. So I took that frustration and flipped it around, and I started seeking and researching um, nonprofit. Um, how to start a nonprofit, what to do in a nonprofit, and all that good stuff. So I took all those tools that I learned, and like I said, I'm still learning to this day. You never stop learning. And I took all those tools and I flipped it around, and I started making an impact on uh, my organization. I started developing trainings for uh, my teams. I started, you know, bringing in people who I knew that was familiar and certified in nonprofit to come in and talk to the team and train the team. We also um, started working with the Memphis Grizzlies Foundation where they have so many webinars and seminars talking about new ment- uh, new mentoring program, learning how to be a mentor. So I used those resources that I had, and I my resources and frustration, and I said, you know what, 
I have to stop asking and start doing. And I have to start researching things on my own on my own and find a solution and find a way because if we continue to be the pity party, then that's where our organization will sit at is in the pit. So in order for you to succeed, you have to do the work. Okay? No one is out there no one out there is going to do the work like you supposed to do the work for your own baby. So this is this is a vision that God gave me. He didn't give me the he, he just gave me the assignment. He didn't say, Here are the rules, here are the regulations, um, uh, this is how I want you to do it, this is what I want you to do. He did not tell me that. I had to find I had to find the s I had to find all the answers. Okay? So all he asked me to do was go into the community, be a restoration to youth girl. He didn't give me no outline. He didn't give me no plan. So I had to do exactly what he told me to do. So now for this organization, I had to create the plan. I had to come up with the concepts, but I had to research. I had to go through everything. So starting um, the um, – the coaching was really dear to me, and it's called Coach CC's Tribe. And I actually um, do one-on-one -on -one coaching, and I actually will be started doing, doing group coaching where I will be working with women who are in nonprofits for youth. It will only be for youth, youth organizations, and I will make sure that these uh, women take their mission and make sure that they are serving only in their mission. Because a lot of times we can put a mission out there uh, for our organization and we serve in everything outside of our mission. And in, in, in our mission, we support girls and women, but we also support our seniors as well because without our seniors, there won't be us. So we have to make sure we add our seniors in there, uh, which is our elders. So um, this program is mainly for motivation, for because nonprofit is not easy. So having women who, and, and I'm a collaborator. I, I am never in competition with anybody that's doing the same thing as me. If I'm rocking, I want you rolling. So if, if I have the, the, the experience or if I have the information that will set your organization apart from any other organization or will push you up a level, I'm willing to give you um, that advice because I didn't have no one to give it to me. But God instilled in me and made made it clear to me that it's okay. I can rest now. So after 10 years, I can rest and I can give back and I can show these women that we don't have to be in competition. We can collaborate, and I'm willing to do that. But you can, um, anybody that wants to um, be in, a part of the program, you can email me at Coach. CC's tribe at gmail.com. Just give me your name and your information, and we can just go from there and set up a one on one or a group session. So definitely go hire and book her now. Crystal is an expert in her field, doing some amazing things. Definitely somebody you need to know and connect with. So go support and get with her now and learn how to build these amazing nonprofits and really do them the right way where it be profitable and where you're making impact and you're actually passionate and giving back as well yes. doing it all at the same time. So you have built multiple tables for yourself, Crystal. So how did you create your seat at the table? Creating a seat at the table was very interesting. Um, you know, growing up in the city of Memphis, um, you know, we always label, you know, as, you know, competition, um, the city of Memphis. Um, there is so many powerful organizations in the city of Memphis, but um, at certain times in the um, journey of BSW, we felt like that we didn't receive the proper support uh, from uh, our city, but that was us being and um, well, we I, I won't say it illusional, but I figure that in life, if you are looking for people to give you a hand clap um, just because you're doing something good, you're in the wrong place. Um, and that's man. So when we start looking at it as if we're doing the work for God himself and giving him credit, and letting him know that we're serving him and not man, 
then we changed our whole mindset and stopped looking for people to congratulate us when we should be congratulating and patting ourselves on the back. As long as we felt that God was um, giving us credit, that's all the credit that we need. So instead of me focusing on um, the city, which we were doing most of all the work in, I started focusing on the other eight chapters that we were serving in um, in our community. So BSW is serving in uh, eight other chapters within the United States. So I use tools and I use resources in those cities and in those states and start connecting with, you know, this person, start connecting with that person, and I start using um, a lot of people that was inside of the organization that actually believed in us. So I pretty much connected with someone who I knew that entirely believed in our program and that will speak on our behalf when our back is turned, and that's that's very important. If you can find someone or find a group of people who will talk greatness over you when your back is turned, those are those are the people that you need to have in your corner. So finding this person who um, writes grants for you without asking for no funds or anything in return and finding someone who speaks on your behalf when your back is turned was very, very, very um, awesome for beautiful spirited women. And this uh, person actually helped us through nominations and through grants to allow us to sit at tables that we never, ever imagined sitting at. And I felt like that um, – we, you know, we do the work, we did the work, and, yes, we deserve to be awarded for the work, but was it time? It may not have been time when we were complaining, but when will it be time? So after, almost within eight years of the organization, um, it took us almost eight years to actually be awarded in, uh, um, on a national level. So that's why I go back to saying patience is virtue. Even though we felt like we were needed to be awarded our second year or our third year at doing nonprofit, it was not time. So having the seats at the different tables was absolutely a mind-blowing um I mean, it was a mind-blowing blessing because I never, ever thought that beautiful spirited women would be sitting at a table um, with people who we see on the TV or people who we see in, you know, music videos or or anything of that nature. I'm getting periodic because it's, it's just truly a blessing how far we have come in the nonprofit sector. I just love it. And it's just congratulations to you and your amazing team on all the great things that you all are doing. And I can't wait to see what God is going to do for you all in this new year. He already has opened some major doors. I've been I'm consistently following you and watching your announcements. So just super congratulations on all the great things that are happening. Thank you so much. Thank you. You are welcome. So we all have a process, right? And I think a lot of people have to understand we have to go through the process to get to that next level. So what did failure teach you on your journey? Failing was um, really a motivation, and it was actually a boost, not only as a team, um, you know, we failed, but, you know, seeing the strength that the women within my organization have, they everything is about team, everything is about sisterhood, so every time we fail, we go back and strategize on how we can make, you know, this better. And when I say the faithful few, they know who they are, but these women will dig deeper. They will go deeper and figure out, okay, we, we failed this time, but how can we succeed the next time? And giving up is not an option in our organization. There is an award that, you know, we had applied for, for I know about, I'd say about a good five years. 
and with this with this award is very tedious um to to i say it's very hard to win i'm not going to say tedious but it's very hard to win because there's so much talent there's so much you know greatness um out there so just because you know you see the consistency you see everything that we're doing sometimes it's just not your time it's just not your turn but we did not give up we we did not give up. We're gonna say we're gonna try again next year. And half of them looked at me like I was crazy. Like we didn't win the last four years. Why we gotta keep trying for this? You know why we gotta keep doing it? Like you know we're not gonna win. And me coming in as a leader said we're gonna try again because we we understand that you know failure is is our motivation. Failure you know give us you know. Um, it gives us a leap in life. And if you don't fail, you won't know how to fix certain things. Or you, you won't know how to, you know, look at certain things in a different way. So we, we tried for the, I think the, it was the, either the fifth or the sixth time, and we tried again. And this time we came out on top. And we felt like we was on top of the world because when you give up, you never know what's on the other side of the mountain. And the more you keep pushing, the more you keep having faith in God and know that he's in control, no matter how many times you do it, you just keep doing it. You just keep doing it and don't give up because your reward will be there. But he just has to see. He just has to see how patient you are. He has to see your strength. He has to see... If you understand that, that that he's in control and he has to know that you're serving him. So until he sees those things, those things won't arise. But if you have passion, you stay faithful, you stay consistent, he will make sure that everything that your heart desires, he will make sure that everything is what's for your business or what's for your organization, it will come into fruitation. I love that. I love that. So you're very successful, Crystal. So what did success teach you? Success taught me how to be humble. Um, like I said, this was, you know, not my dream. Um, and the the path that he has me on is like unbelievable. Um, it's, it's a it's a it's a it's an experience that I won't ever forget. Um, it's like I'm reliving. Uh, the moment of being a young girl that was lost, um, and it's just um, it's just a blessing to be a vessel for another young lady, and also to be a motivator for women out there uh, of today. And I can't, we as a team, and and, and as a leader. We can't get everyone to see our heart, but the ones who actually see our heart and know that we are doing it uh, for the right reason and doing it for God, then so be it. But other than that, um, it's just a blessing to, you know, um, be in, in, in the position of knowing that, you know, I have fulfilled a void um, in my life and I have you know, serve um, God in his assignment, and that success will always be there, but I'm glad that I chose his assignment and and feel like that, you know, um, my success is, you know, truly making an impact uh, in my community as well as in my family. I love it. I love it. I love your passion, Chris. Love your passion. You can tell all in your voice. Just love it. I just Thank love you. your story. Love your Thank story. you. So what can we expect from you in this new year, new decade of 2020? Uh, what can you expect from us even through um, the drastic change and the standstill in the world on today mm-hmm. um, and also praying for each and every one that has, you know, experienced uh, de- a decrease uh, through the COVID-19 and praying for everyone who has been impacted by the COVID-19 and sending prayers and strength to everyone and each and everyone's family. 
Uh, but in um, today's light, into 2020, uh, we are coming as stronger, strong as possible, even through um, not being able to see each other face to face. But we are bringing our virtual uh, platform. We call it the Weekend BSW Girls Live Workshops. That's on our platform right now. And it is touching so many lives, as well as, you know, girls, women, men, families, everybody, anybody that wants to watch it is uh, truly an impact. And, Ashley, we thank you for coming on and putting on an awesome uh, workshop by our platform. And we also are gearing and, you know, getting ready for our new initiative that we have, Girls on a Mission. We'll be taking um, girls out of the low-income areas that has been consistent um, in their communities as well as their church, making great grades in their schools. And hopefully once all of this, you know, um, epidemic is over with, we will be taking them uh, them on international trips outside of the country because half of them have not ever been out of their own community. And as a little girl, I this this would be like my first time, you know, going out of the country. So this would be another experience that I can actually experience with the girls. And, you know, we just, you know, we, we just going hard for God and for these girls. So everything that we didn't get a chance to do and that they want to do that's educational and that's making an impact in our community, we're going to figure out and we're going to find a way to do it. So um, anybody that wants to, you know, be a board, wants to be a volunteer and all that stuff, just email us at beautifulspiritedwomen at gmail.com. We would love to have you. But our goal is to just keep making an impact in our community for youth girls. Well, super congratulations in advance. Girls on a mission. I love that. I love it, love it, love it. Thank Find you. Find that are listening. Make sure you get involved with Beautiful Spirited Women. As I stated, Chris has done some amazing things, and, she, and her team is amazing as well. As these workshops, yes, I was blessed to be able to speak to your amazing nonprofit and, and girls and women, and it was a blessing. So for our listeners that are listening, make sure you tune in to these workshops, support, follow her nonprofit, Get involved. Even, you know, if you feel like you'll be a great speaker, reach out. And so yes. uh, I just want to say thank you again, Crystal, for everything that you're doing. Super, super kudos to everything that you're doing. I consistently, like I said, watch you and follow you. And you are, like I said, y'all are always out giving back and reaching back. And your, and your girls, they are young entrepreneurs who are doing some amazing things in their business. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, we are so proud. You're so proud of them. So proud of them. And I know as a young girl, it's, it's just so hard when you're going to school. You got extracurricular activities, but you know we try to keep them busy. And the more we keep them busy doing positive things, the more they will stay out of the street and away from you know things that uh, hurt or harm to them. Absolutely, and that's what it's all about, giving back and pouring into them, letting them, you know, to be vulnerable, that we do, it is a safe space to share what's going on, and we're here for you. So that is so, so, so important. So will you tell our listeners, Crystal, how they can follow you, support you on all social media platforms? Yes, so um, on all our social media platforms, we are at Beautiful Spirited Women at well, Beautiful Spirit of Women, you can just do the ad sign at Beautiful Spirit of Women on all platforms, Instagram, social media, um, not social media, Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter, and also our website at BeautifulSpiritedWomen.org. So you can reach us at all those places, send us a DM or inbox, but we'd rather for you to send us an email so we can kind of keep up with the email. So we would love to have each and every one of you. If you have any questions, you can contact us as well. So follow and support her on all social media platforms today. Connect with Crystal. He's definitely somebody to know and connect with and a, a woman that is on the watch for 2020, okay? Definitely make sure because they are knocking it out, okay? She was a L'Oreal uh, honoree, you know? Yes. And so amazing things are in the works, so make sure you connect with her. So, Krista, thank you so much for taking the time out of your very busy schedule to come to the table tonight. This has been a powerful interview, and I can't wait to invite you back to the table. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me at the table. I have 
gotten full. <laughs> you are welcome, and I look forward to continuing to work with you and collaborating with you in the future for Awesome. Thank you so much, Ashley. Yes, yes, you are welcome. So I would like to give a special thanks to my intern, Sarah, from Tennessee State University, and my intern, Vontaria, from Winston-Salem State University. You all may follow me on Facebook at Ashley Little and on Instagram at underscore Ashley A. Little. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Creating Your Seat at the Table, where Ashley speaks with corporate professionals, celebrities, entrepreneurs, authors, and speakers who are transitioning or have transitioned to entrepreneurship.